Welcome to the training tutorial on how to operate ProSwim software. Let's get started. Open the ProSwim software by clicking on the software icon. The flashing green light indicates we are connected with the name of the timer. If you are not connected, you may refer to Aquatics ProSwim software overview for communication setup. The first thing to do is configure ProSwim for the pool. Click on Options Configure. The first tab is Pool. This allows you to set the number of lanes. Set the lanes up as normal or reverse. If the timer is closest to lane 1, it would be normal. If it is closest to lane 8, set it to reversed. Lane label can be set up for 0 to 9 or 1 to 10. The length of the pool can be set up for 25 yards, 25 meters, or 50 meters. When this is completed, go to the timer tab. Go to the arming delay. This can be set depending on the length of the pool. Usually for a 25 yard pool, it is set to 15 seconds. Next is flag time, 3 tenths of a second. This is the difference between the touchpad times and button times. For start input, NC stands for normally closed and NO normally open. Primary time, you can select touchpads, button one or button one through three. Lane module input, you can select near or near and far. Near refers to just timing at the near end, and near and far refers to timing at the near and far end. Keep precision at 1 one hundredth of a second. Choose your relay takeoff platform. Options are none, button slash Dactronics, or Omega platform. In this case, we are selecting Dactronics. Then choose which button input the Dactronics relay takeoff platform is plugged into. The arm time is a window to choose to accept relay takeoff platform times, which is usually set to six tenths of a second. Flag time window can be set on or off depending if you want to see that at the end of each event or heat. This window shows the difference between the touchpad and button time if they are more than three tenths of a second. Next is the console printer tab. You can select yes or no to print results. Always have the race log on. Select lane or place four to print results. Select yes or no for print backups and select no, cumulative or subtractive for print splits. In the Pro Printer tab, you can connect a printer to the ProSwim laptop and print off results with standard 8.5 by 11 paper versus the timer printer. If you are doing this, you will need to choose a format. There are up to 10 formats to choose from. Simply pick the formats from the drop-down menu you want to use. Once you are finished with the format, place the mouse cursor in print header line 1 and give it a name. At the SCBD tab, also known as the scoreboard tab, you may choose the number of lines you have for a numeric fixed digit or RTD matrix display. You can set the number of lines for the display that you want to show. Split hold time is how long the split time would hold and then blink. Finish page time is set for a single line display. This is how quickly the finish time will rotate. In the COM ports tab, click configure. This is where you can set your configuration to communicate to the timer. We are using Ethernet timer, which is set to the UDP IP port under type. Then click Finish. Once the settings are complete, press OK. Now the ProSwim is configured for the pool. With ProSwim configured for our pool setup, we are now ready to download our high-tech file. Once downloaded, you will receive a message stating an event order file was received. Click on Yes to save it. Name the file and press Save. Now the high-tech file is in the title box. Click on the title menu and select an event. There are three events in the title box. We will select Women's Seniors 200 Yard Freestyle. This is our first event and heat. The ProSwim software is ready to accept the start input from the horn start. Click on Start for training purposes. When start is triggered, it will automatically populate the names in the ProSwim software. These names come from HiTech. HiTech must be open in order to receive this data. The software is ready to accept the touchpad splits. After the touchpads, you can see the arming delay counting down. Once the system is finished counting down, it is ready to receive another touchpad split.
and again the arming delay is counting down. When finished the software is ready to receive another touchpad split. If for some reason a touchpad split is missed, you can adjust the length by pressing the up arrow. The system will give the operator warning that something has happened by highlighting the box red. To fix this, adjust the length by pressing the up arrow. Now our length count is correct. We are ready to receive our final finish touch with buttons. As you can see, the software has flagged multiple lanes red because it thinks the finish time should have already came in. When all the lanes have finished, there will be a flag symbol and you can see the backup times come in. Lane 5 is flagged yellow because the backup time is not within 3 tenths of a second of the touchpad time. This is a warning for the operator. You can also see if a lane misses a button time. Lane 1 and 3 button 2 was missed. We are now ready to store print and reset the run time. Click on store print and then press yes to reset. The next thing to do is to advance the ProSwim to our next event or heat. We will go on to our next event by pressing the up arrow. Event 2 is the Women's Seniors 50 Yard Freestyle. Press Start for training purposes. Once the start input comes in, it will update the names and refresh the times. The arming delay is counting down and we are ready for the finish touch with buttons. With all our touchpad times, you can see lane 8 backup time is not within 3 tenths of a second of the touchpad time. The pro swim will flag this red. This is another warning for the operator. We are ready to store print the results and reset the run time. Let's get ready for our next event or heat by clicking on the arrow up button. In this case, we will click on the arrow up for event. Event 3 is a women's seniors 200 yard freestyle relay. Select start for training purposes. You can see the arming delay counting down after it is started and once completed, we'll be ready for our touchpad split with a relay exchange.
Once all the touchpads have been received, the arming delay will again count down, and when completed, the system will be activated for another split. Now we are ready for the third and final exchange. When the arming delay is complete, the system is ready for its finished touch along with buttons. E1, E2, and E3 are the exchanges. The red highlight in lane 2 and 7 indicate the exchanges were negative. With all the lanes marked as finish, we can store print and reset the time. This will complete our event.